Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to show you how to do an IFR landing in the very modern JF-17. Now the more I fly this plane, the more I'm liking it. The IFR landing suite in this airframe is absolutely sublime. It's a fully integrated ILS TACAN SCA system and it's fully automatic or almost automatic and basically even a monkey could land in blackout visibility we've got blackout whiteout visibility today just to show how easy it is this is literally the first time i'm trying it so uh, myself and rc are here we're going to land on cobbletti the vitals of cobbletti are runway 07 and you can take a note of everything there if you like tacam with the runways with the ils and so on. The way an integrated ILS system works, or IFR navigation system works in one of these planes is that first it's going to take us to what we call a FAF, FAF, Final Approach Fix. Final Approach Fix is always 10 miles off the threshold of the landing runway. I'm going to be about there, imagine there. That's our FAF. So first it's going to guide us to a FAF there, probably with TACAM. Once it's got us to that point, it's going to switch us over to ILS and bring us all the way down to the threshold of the runway and pretty much land us. We have to fly the plane still. It's not that automatic, but it's going to do all the navigation for us. First things first, we want to choose on our UFC here. Uh, what We've got to tell it that we want to go and land. Currently, it's set up for flight plan A. We don't want flight plan A anymore. We want to land at an airfield. So I'm going to press it now. This all relies on you having the data cartridge in and program, by the way. Nothing works without that. So I'm pause. I don't want flight plan A. It said I don't want a bearing, I don't want a course, I don't want flight plan B. I want approach. I'm going to do an approach. Whoops, click on there. So what it's telling us now is that we're going to approach and we're going to approach to airfield 50. The airfields run from 50 to 69. So it carries 19 airfields in its data cartridge, in its memory. And it orders them respective distance from where we are to the current airfield. So airfield 50 is 25 nautical miles at a bearing of 48. Now, remember in this aeroplane, bearings are relative, so not absolute bearings. So when it says 048, it does not mean 048 like on, on, on the tape heading here or anything. It means that zero, that there is 048. So it's something very important to understand. Altitude, 59 feet. Has it got ILS? Yes, it has. Has it got TACAN? Yes. And it's automatically selected 50. We could press that to go through the different airfields. We're just going to make sure that it selected the current airfield because we don't have an identifier. So we're going to click us on this on us there. Going to be 24 miles. And that's the only thing that's 24 miles. But to me is 28 miles. So we are at the correct airfield. The next thing I think I want to show is this. This automatically is populated when we go to approach. And the beautiful thing about this is you don't have to type any of this in. The data cartridge knows all of the airfields on this map and it knows everything about them so it's already told you that it's on ILS rather than SCA we can ch change to SCA I'm assuming you if you're watching this video I'm sure you know what ILS SCA and TACAN are we're not going to go through that now it already knows it's runway 70 and it is it already knows it's TACAN 67 it already knows it has a course 070 that's a true course by the way it already it knows it has a glide slope of three we can't adjust that that is standard for this particular runway uh, we've got the FAF here uh, so we're telling it that it is Final approach fix zero for zero 07. And here is for the base. Uh, or We're not sure if this is for the FAF or for the runway yet. We haven't discovered, but either of them, it's the northing, easting, and the altitude. Next, we have to look at these two guys here. Now, instead of the FAF, I could go to the runway if I wanted. I obviously don't want to go to the runway because I haven't got to my FAF yet. So I'm going to go there. Um, I've got my ILS, and I don't want to use my ILS, so I'm going to have to pause again. An ILS generally is only used once you've got to the FAF. Uh, that's just how ILS works. If you're not at the FAF, an ILS system just doesn't really work. So before we get to the FAF, we have other two options, TACAN or SCA, and we're going to use TACAN next to show you how we get there. If we look on our HSD here, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, that is showing, that's us there, that is our course to the FAF, that is the FAF there, that circle there, once I get in it, will automatically detect when I get to that circle or very near to it, and it should, should switch me to runway here, because the next leg is the 10 mile final, the IFR final. If it doesn't work, then I can uh, ma manually change here. So my only job at the moment is to navigate. And I'm just going to use, I do have HUD symbology, but I'm just going to use my uh, HSD here to navigate to that circle there. You can hear the Morse identifier for the TACAN station at the moment. We've got a, um, an individual TACAN video if you want to go and watch that. Now, we're going to talk about speed, altitude and all that stuff. It's no, there's no point in getting to the FAF at the wrong altitude or wrong speed, really because an ILS is a very thin beam of radiation and if you don't intersect it exactly in terms of altitude and everything else then you miss it, you miss the glide slope, you can't do the ILS part of the journey so you have to hit that FAF at the right altitude. Hitting the FAF at the right altitude is depending 
on uh, the relationship between the faff and the runway. So in this case, the runway is pretty much at sea level. You know, it's just a few feet off sea level. So that means, and, and the FAF in this case is 10 nautical miles away from the runway, the glide slope is 3 degrees. So if you extrapolate that through mathematics, pretty roughly speaking, 10 miles times 300 feet of altitude per mile gives us 3,000 feet. Uh, now remember, if you're working in ASL, you've got to make compensations and QFE for the airfield there. So if it was a high altitude airbase, you need to go and set your QFE by talking to tower. Not going to do that today, keeping it simple. So. We're going to go with basic or with our base QFE here and we're going to get ourselves to Angels 3, 3,000 feet. That will put us in the corridor, as we call it, for the ILS. So we can pick up the ILS. If I went in there at 6,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 1,000 feet, it wouldn't work. So it's very important. So we're probably, by the looks of things, going to be in the suit. Also notice how I'm going to lose my HUD symbology. I can't see it. Well, I can a little bit, but it's very hard to see. So we're going to start thinking about going heads down. Uh, we're going to get rid of our stick. We're going to go to our EFIS. So I'm probably going to go heads down for this. You can use the HUD, but heads down is, I find, better training. So I'm going to make sure everything's cooking on gas. Heading towards our FAF and our speed's got too high. When we are hitting our FAF, I suggest around 250 knots. So we're going to be a little bit faster because as soon as we hit our FAF, we're going to want our gear out, flaps down because we're on our approach at that point. Note we've got an indicator here that there is INS base. That's not relevant. That is Takan and it is relevant but not the method that we're going for today. So we're gonna be switching, whoops, we're gonna be switching over to ILS in the not too distant future. It's gonna be a little bit difficult. So you see, I'm getting on my hard, on my HSD, I'm getting close to my FAF now. And also, it's, if you're like me and you're easily excitable, it's very hard to keep calm. Okay, I'm Angels 3, about to hit the FAF. I'm gonna go early and put my gear and flaps out now. It's a little bit early, but it's just less stress for later on. Make any uh, changes I need to in terms of trim and whatnot. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there. I've hit my FAF. Uh, it's changed to runway automatically. So it's now turning me towards the runway. What it hasn't done is changed me to ILS uh, automatically. I don't know why. I'm going to have to change to ILS. So I'm pause. ILS. You, it will, it's manual. You have to change. You have to oh, manually sorry. Change right. It. Yeah. Okay. Understood. So that's that. So I've now gone to ILS and we are hopefully uh, within parameters. We're a little bit low, but otherwise we should be good. That there is the course line to the runway there. That's a deviation line. That's telling us we're way off to the uh, left, I think, of the. Basically, what we want to do is get this course deviation line into the center there by maneuvering left or right. On our EFIS, one thing I forgot to do is press ILS. So I must press ILS here. That's going to bring my ILS glide slope and localizer into play. I'm going to just do that and pause it again and we'll talk about that. Ping. Okay, so what we've got is a glide slope. That's a glide slope line there. Here is our localizer here. What we want to do is travel so that that guy there and that guy there are centered at that point there. If we do that, we're traveling along the beam of radiation that is the ILS and we can follow that all the way down to the runway and trust that will work. We have a repeater in the HUD in terms of that guy there and that guy there. We've also note we've got our usual landing gear, our error bracket there, our path marker there, and so on. Now, like I said, we've got lots of symbology up here, but it's very hard to see, especially on a video. So we're going to go mainly heads down. There's no point of looking out the window anymore. Main things I'm going to be looking at are localizer, glide slope, HSD for situational awareness, and my course deviation here. I think I'm slightly left of the course line at the moment, so that means I need to pull right to bring that deviation line in. So let's go and get it done. I'm going to try and merge my turn to the left so that the deviation line matches this line when I'm turned onto it, which is a lot to try and do. So I'm just going to concentrate a little bit here. Keeping an eye on everything now, basically. Everything. Speed, altitude, angle. A nice little check we can do, sorry. A nice little check if you get confused, because it's so easy to get confused. It's so hard to do this. If you get confused with your altitude, your up and down, your pitch, just remember, you know it's a glide slope of three. So if you look here, a path marker should always be around the three marker. If it's down at five, seven, uh, ten or whatever, you know something's gone seriously wrong. And that's really easy to happen. You can see I'm way below the glide slope at the moment. It's my fault. I got below that, but uh, I can recover it. But it's just about keeping situational awareness between this. So again, I want to merge that deviation line with that uh, course line there with the 12 o'clock position uh, while keeping these two central. That speed at the correct speed. I'm not going to go on speed yet. Um, and keeping an eye on everything else for just basic situational awareness. Look for any obvious errors that I've made because, like I said, they're really easy to make. Avoid any oscillations, PIOs, and so on. So I'm going to arrest my descent because I want to merge with the uh, too slow, too slow, too slow. So I want to go level now because I'm way below the, the, the glide slope. 
When you're below the glide slope, don't go up to meet it, just go level and it will come down and meet you. If you get below, above the glide slope, which can happen, then so be it, you just have to go down and meet it. There's a lot to think about when doing this. Okay, I'm not too bad. I've gone slightly right of the... Um, I just have to concentrate for a second here. I've gone slightly right of the course line now. I'm going to deviate back left ever so slightly. Otherwise, we're not too bad shape here. Not going to worry about on speed. Okay, I've actually got that not too bad. Slightly to the right now. We've got a good merge. We're bang on the course right now. Everything's telling me we've got this pretty good, which is not bad for a first try. And it shows the power of the system. Try and doing this in, in a, a, a MiG-21 or an F5 the first time, and you've got no hope in hell. Right, I've started losing it now. I've gone um, left of the course line, so devi I'm deviating. Also, I'm dropping too high, uh, so I'm going to level out ever so slightly. Uh, I'm still deviating, losing concentration. I want to marry it. Think about marrying everything up again. Okay, I'm on glide slope. Start going down again at three degrees pitch. Whoops, concentrate, concentrate. I've got to go left and marry quickly. And we're on course. Got it. Uh, another little cue. We've got this little cue here, like an F-16. Tadpole, or the sperm, as some people like to call it. Um, we want to keep this guy inside this circle here. So it's another way of staying on the ILS line. Uh, the reason I haven't liked to show it off very much is because in certain conditions, it's actually very hard to see the HUD. Some aircraft, you can change the HUD symbology color. We've already got the maximum brightness and maximum contrast. Uh, but that is another thing I could be using. But because I want to do it the old-fashioned way, I'm going to do it down here. It's just something to bear in mind. Another thing that I can say, actually, again, I like to do things the old-fashioned way, is that I only turned my ILS thing on here um, once I got to the FAF. Now, you can actually turn it on before you get to the FAF and get useful information from it. So you can get uh, elevation information before you even get to the FAF from this. And that's because it's an integrated system that can interpolate between TACAN, ILS, and, and guide you even when you're not on an ILS beam. It's very clever, very intuitive, almost a bit cheating, but great. So all this stuff together makes it very hard uh, to cock this up. Uh, but let's keep going. And, um, okay, we're getting close now. We're getting close now. So I'm going to start we're above the glide slope. Whoops. I've got to think about getting on uh, on alpha now on speed. And you know that from our um, if I let I verged because I was talking. We're now below glide slope. I did a drop there. You saw I lost situational awareness and I dropped. So I need to get back on. I'm just got to head right, and I'm now below glide slope because I'm a silly Billy. I am, however, on speed. That's an outer beacon warning. We're on outer beacon. That's a good sign. It means we've got uh, one mile or two miles to go. Oh, shit, I've just drifted. I was talking and I lost concentration again. Localizer slid left. That's completely my fault. Glide slope's not too bad. So I need to slip back now. Am I over the runway? I am. I'm over the runway. <laughs> Look, I'm here. I didn't even notice. Right. But I didn't. <laughs> So, uh, I've got to have a stop there. Uh, what is supposed to happen um, is you're supposed to talk to the ATC and tell them to turn the lights on, and then you can see them. Obviously, they didn't turn the lights on, so, uh, and I've got, you know, zero visibility, so I didn't um, get that out of interest. In a real approach, obviously, you go around, do it all the way back out to sea and do it again. So, the only bit I lost at the end there was I was just chatting and I slightly went off glide slope. Now, as you get closer and closer to the runway, that will be easier to do because smaller variation in my plane will cause a bigger deviation in my relative bearing to the runway. And the other thing I did wrong was I just didn't see the runway on time. Again, if it was lit up, I would have saw that about half a mile before I got to the runway and I could have landed, but that's just uh, sod's law. So that is the integrated ILS TACAN system. It's really, really good. Anything you want to add to that RC? The only thing I'd want to add is that the... There's an SCA option that isn't very common in other aircraft. And from what we can see, that's mm -hmm. system controlled area. Mm -hmm. And we believe that's just a visual approach mode with a controller. Yeah, um, which is, as far as we're aware, not a thing in DCS. But again, we stand to be corrected if you guys think it is. I hope that helps. Until you later.